आई वेलकम टू द क्लास टूडे वी कंटिन्यू विद आर डिस्कशन ऑन गॉस थ्योरम एंड इन द लास्ट इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द गॉस थ्योरम इट्स डेरिवेशन एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन टू कैलकुलेट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ड्यू टू एन इन्फानाइटली लॉन्ग स्ट्रेट कंडक्टर नाउ इन द सेकेंड एप्लीकेशन दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर गॉस थ्योरम इलेक्ट्रिक फ्लाक्स इज इक्वल्स टू क्यू अपॉन एप्सल एंड नॉट क्यू इज द टोटल चार्ज इन क्लोज बाय द सरफेस and that's an not is permittivity of free space in the second application again as i told you that gauss's theorem is an important tool to calculate the electric field so in the second application we will be calculating electric field due to an infinite plane sheet of charge so you have a plane sheet of charge which is containing a lot of charges there right so we assume the area of this to be s and sigma to be the सरफेस चार्ज डेंसिटी सरफेस चार्ज डेंसिटी एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट एनिवर वी डू एनी डेरिवेशन वी शुड ऑलवेज राइट एन इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट अबाउट इट सो दैट यू विल बी डूइंग आफ्टर ड्राइंग द टाइम ना आई वॉन्ट यू पीपल टू टेक अ मोमेंट एंड जस्ट थिंक अबाउट दैट वट कुड बी द सरफेस विच वी कैन टेक आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द गॉज इन सरफेस विच वी कैन टेक and you know what should be the characteristic for gaussian surface in order to calculate the electric flux uh, electric field so gaussian surface has three characteristics number one symmetrical it should be closed and number three it should be three dimensional so uh, infinite plane for infinite plane sheet of charge if you can come up with a method uh, or with a surface where you have to put this surface in such a way uh, you have to put the gaussian surface in such a way that it becomes symmetrical to the surface so as of now what we are doing we are drilling we have drilled a hole here and we are taking the gaussian surface to be a cylindrical one like this a cylinder i am taking basically okay and the length of the cylinder we will take now again as i told in the previous part this cylinder has Three, one, two, three. Three different surfaces in it. So whenever you are proving this, you should always keep in mind that you have to plot the directions of electric field and area map. So positive charge, electric field will be in this direction. Of course, area vector will be in the same direction. From there, electric field in the outward direction. Why outward direction? Because this is a positive charge, and area vector is direction outward. Correct. Okay. Now comes this spherical part. So again, electric field will be outward, positive charge, and area vector will be in the upward or downward direction, whatever part you are taking, because it will be uh, perpendicular to the surface and uh, radially outwards. So what will what will be the angle here? This would be 90. So we know that electric flux is E A cos theta. If the theta is 90, then electric flux will be zero. So it means this second surface will not contribute, will not contribute to the electric flux, right? So that is very clear from the diagram. So only surface one and surface three are going to contribute. So I'll write surface. Two will not contribute in the electric flux. Why it will not contribute? We know the reason that the angle between the electric field and the area vector is 90, and therefore this electric flux will be zero. Now electric flux will be surface integral e dot ds. For this surface, first surface plus surface integral, uh, third surface, and then e dot ds. What will be the angle between these two? Angles are zero. Because electric field and area vector are in same direction, <coughs> so 
I have taken the surface area as PS, ES plus ES. This is 2 ES. This is equation number 1. Now from Gauss's theorem, we all know that electric flux is equal to Q upon epsilon. But we also know that this sigma is equal to Q upon S. It means Q is equal to sigma S. If I put it here, so then electric flux sigma S upon epsilon naught, this is equation number 2. Now compare 1 and 2, what do you make it? 2ES sigma S upon epsilon. What will be the value of E? Sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. This is the electric field due to infinite plane sheet of charge. Now guys, we started with electric field for a single charge, which was E is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square. Then we went on to calculate the electric field due to an electric dipole. So which was inversely proportional to RQ. Now before this we did it for a straight current carrying conductor or infinitely long straight wire which was inversely proportional to R. But now for this plane sheet of charge it does not depend on R itself. It just depends on this sigma which is the surface charge density it depends on this is a constant actually, so it depends on the sigma. It does not depend on the R. So as we are moving ahead, we are getting quite interesting results. And this is the electric field due to this infinite plane sheet of charge, sigma upon 2 epsilon naught, which is on the both sides. Now this is important guys, you need to understand this point because the same point we will be using in the next chapter as well. So in electric field due to an infinite, whenever you have plane sheet of charge, it produces an electric field on both sides to be sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. If I take it to be on a single side, then it will be sigma upon 2 epsilon naught multiplied by 2. So 2 goes off, so it will be sigma upon epsilon naught. Right? So this is the electric field due to an infinite plane sheet of charge. 